episode of Forks and Films. I'm your host, Jacqueline Strayer. Tonight is also our final episode of Forks and Films, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. But first, what are we going to watch tonight? The 1991 comedy drama film, Fried Green Tomatoes. And what is Chef Martin going to teach us how to make? You guessed it, Fried Green Tomatoes. But before I turn it over to him, we just wanted to showcase some of the wonderful social media posts that you have shared with us whether they have been photos, comments, or videos. And you can take a look at them here. And don't forget, if you have the opportunity, we'd love for you to post for our final episode tonight. So with that, the film can be downloaded on these channels, and don't forget to post on our social media channels. So see you in a little bit, have a great time making fried green tomatoes, and then we're gonna talk about the film. Thanks, Jacqueline. This week, Fried Green Tomatoes, both the movie and the food. Week eight, this is our last episode, and we really didn't plan it that way, but barbecue did end uh, on this weekend as we're preparing a Memorial Day. So uh, very fitting that we're doing a barbecue dish, uh, Martin's Barbecue, uh, reference to a great barbecue in Nashville. Okay, I'm aware my daughter brought the shirt back for me. Uh, both Candace and Cassidy gave it to me the birthday present, so I'm proud to support the shirt. Okay, fried green tomatoes we associate with the South, right? It, ever since the great movie, uh, you know, we're going to be watching later. But you know something, it is not an inherent Southern dish, although some of the people in the South may argue with you. It actually traces back to the Northeast. And from there, from the Jewish population, from Eastern Europe, it is uh, cited in some cookbooks, uh, but it really did take a hold in the South, and it's become very, very identifiable with Southern comfort food. Uh, fried green tomatoes are uh, made from tomatoes that are not ripe. Okay, it's not a special type of tomato, uh, you know, it, there's not like a red tomato and a green tomato, it's just a tomato that hasn't ripened yet. And it came out of, like most of our dishes that we've done, out of necessity in the Northeast where the, the temperature doesn't allow for that end of crop tomato to ripen. They had a lot of tomatoes that, that didn't quite turn red, so what are you going to do? You make something out of something you wouldn't normally, normally use. So they made a tomato uh, fried product from that. All right, so get your ingredients. I'm gonna tweak a couple of things as we go. So you get your tomato, and you wanna slice it about half inch, very, very firm. It has to be firm. If you buy them uh, in a supermarket, get one that's off like this, you'll see. Typically, uh, you, know, you get ones that haven't ripened yet from your garden if you grow tomatoes, or ones that didn't quite get to ripen towards the end of the season. Keep them in your fridge. Don't let them stay out on the counter like I do, where they get very ripe uh, and they become more flavorful. That doesn't work for this application, so you want to stay away from that. Very sharp knife, and we're going to cut half-inch portions. So let's get this all together. Now we have our tomatoes ready. We're done slicing. So we are going to get our flour, egg wash. We're going to do our breadcrumb and cornmeal mix. Breadcrumb, equal part breadcrumb, equal part cornmeal, and then our put a Cajun spice in there just to jazz it up a little bit. And let's mix this up so you get a nice even mixture. Okay. Now, as you see, I set this up in a way that really kind of flows. We're going to get our tomato, dip it in the flour, egg wash, breadcrumb, and the plate. Prepare it for frying. So we take the tomato. By putting in the flour, it dries the outer edge so that the egg will uh, stick to it. And then you drop it into the breadcrumb cornmeal mix. I try and keep one hand dry 
and then one will contact the egg, but one stays with it. You really want to cover it, get a nice coating on a tomato. Okay, and we do this for all of our tomatoes. Okay, we finished breading and cornmealing our tomatoes. They're looking really good. And one of the notes that we want to mention is you could do it to this process. Put these on a sh if you don't want to do it that evening or get them ready for another day so it's just easier for you. You can freeze these uh, on a sheet pan, let them freeze and then put them in a Ziploc bag and they'll hold and they'll be ready for you to, to uh, prepare on another time. So you could prep it and then get it done on another day if you'd like to do that. So I set myself up on the recipe. It called for extra virgin olive oil. I don't, I, I think you can use vegetable oil and then add a little extra virgin. I got extra virgin here with a little infused pepper. So a little spice to that, I like that. You add it, you blend it, and you make a, a little bit of a blend. So again, similar to the breading, I like to do in a process. The, the raw product gets cooked and it gets put right over here to a paper towel I have set up on a, a cooling rack so that it doesn't get hot from above below where it will then kind of, you know, make the product get soft. So we have it all ready to go. Paper towel, pick up the, uh, the uh, excess oil. So we take the uh, tomato, you put it in. Again, you don't want to deep fry this. You don't want to submerge this completely in oil. You want to have just, the t just about to the top of the tomato with the, uh, with the oil cooking so that it doesn't get that deep fry. So what happens is you let these cook for about two minutes per side. I'm using cast iron. I really like working with cast iron. It, it evenly distributes the heat. It browns very, very nicely. And it does impart a little bit of that flavor, that rustic, uh, you know, country flavor. So we let these go for half, uh, half about two minutes. So let's continue uh, with the cooking. And then we turn them over at that point when, uh, when they're just brown, we do the same for the other side and we cool them down. So let, let's, let's go for about two minutes and then we'll come back to them. Okay, so these are just ready to be turned. Take them, a uh, nice brown crust on the outside. see them coming all right so you see that nice and brown on both sides and we want to lay it down just drip off some of that oil into the pan if you can okay so we finished frying uh, you want to let them cool just a little bit, not too much. You want to get that oil off. That's what you want to do. And these really have to be served uh, right away, uh, immediately. Okay, so uh, we take them and we want to arrange them on the plate. I like to just shingle them. And serve these really with like a, a, a ranch dressing or a romelade you can make uh, with... Uh, pickled uh, relish, that's a good combination, or serve with a hot sauce. Like a, whatever you want to do, you put your, your dipping sauce right there, you know, a little bit of parsley, dress it up a little bit. And I like a chipotle uh, Tabasco, that really works well too, I like spice. So, fried green tomatoes, an excellent side dish. Uh, a lot easier than you think, and it accompanies all types of barbecue, pulled pork, ribs, uh, chicken, anything that you're doing. Uh, it has the egg. It is, it, is a, uh, it is not vegetarian, but if you want to make it as such, leave the egg out and you can try and do it with the flour and the breadcrumb and the, and the cornmeal all mixed together. It, it could work well too. All right, fried green tomatoes. Let me bring it over to you guys. Forks and film. Eight episodes of a really, really great idea. Thanks to Jacqueline and thanks to the team at NYU. You guys did really, really great work. Uh, it's all in the editing, you know, so uh, uh, not what I'm doing here, that's for sure. 
So I want to thank you for, for all your work and your time. We, we at the cinema really appreciate you guys viewing this and, and being together. We want to put something out there, uh, make an effort and be, uh, you know, in, in your presence. And now things are starting to ease up a bit. Hopefully soon this summer the cinema will be back and we hope to see you there. Uh, have a great, great uh, weekend and we thank you. Back to you, Jacqueline. Action. Welcome back everyone. Hope you had a great time making fried green tomatoes. Let's talk about the 1991 film that was directed by John Adnett. The film takes place in the Deep South and it's in two different time periods. It's headlined by Kathy Bates, Jessica Tandy, as well as Mary Stuart Masterson, Mary Louise Parker, and Cicely Tyson. It explores many complex themes, including those of life, love, family, friendship, grief and loss, as well as racism and domestic abuse. It starts out where Kathy Bates, who plays a middle-aged unhappy woman, is visiting a family member at a nursing home in Alabama. And while there, she meets Jessica Tandy, who's an elderly woman living in the nursing home. As their friendship develops, Jessica Tandy tells Kathy Bates of her life earlier at the Whistle Stop Cafe, and that is actually run in an earlier time period by Mary Stuart Masterson and her friend Mary Louise Parker, as well as Cicely Tyson. Through the explanation of that time period, Kathy Bates learns a lot about herself. It's a very interesting and complex film with the flashbacks, but at the end of the film, and you may suspect it along the way, there's a very satisfying conclusion. The film received good commercial success. It was nominated for two Academy Awards, including Best Adapted Screenplay, as well as for Best Supporting Actress for Jessica Tandy. So I think you'll really enjoy watching the film. It has a wonderful score by Thomas Newman, and it's beautifully shot. As we think about our last weeks together, we've seen a lot of wonderful films, and we've learned how to make a lot of wonderful, delicious dishes thanks to Chef Martin. So here are some of the things that we've watched, some of the things that we've learned how to make. We hope you've enjoyed making them. And there, I, would, I would be remiss without thanking a number of people who have been instrumental in making this series possible. First, I'd like to thank Nate Close at the Cinema Arts Center, who made sure that our content was seen every single week. Of course, without Martin Batera, my friend, colleague, and fellow trustee at the Cinema Arts Center, who welcomed us into his kitchen every week and learned, we learned how to make something wonderful thanks to him. And of course, my wonderful team at NYU in the graduate programs of Integrated Marketing and Public Relations and Corporate Communications. These fine students created all the communications, the social media posts, the marketing, the publicity, as well as edited all of the episodes. So thanks to all of them for their wonderful achievement with this work, as well as the contributions they've made in making the series possible. So with that, when we started our series, we were in a very different time period, and now we see things starting to open up. So with that, we'd like to thank all of you. We've enjoyed being with you every week. We've hope, hopefully we've given you some enjoyment your family learning how to make some of these dishes and watching some wonderful films. We hope that we see you really soon and in person. So on behalf of Team Forks and Films, thanks for watching.